In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Now we all know that fatty acids, on one end there is methyl group and on another end, and on another end there is C double OH group is there. If you count carbons from this methyl end, we call it as a omega numbering system and if you count the carbons from the C double OH end, we call it as a delta numbering system. Okay, so obviously in case of omega-3 fatty acid, there is a presence of double bond, there is a presence of double bond between between omega-3 carbon and omega-4 carbon and remember always lesser number of the carbon which is making a double bond that is referred in the in the naming system of fatty acid. So what about omega-6 fatty acid? So obviously the double bond will be present between omega-6 and omega-7 carbon. Okay, so this is about the chemistry of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid. Now let us see certain examples of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid. So the example of omega-3 fatty acids are omega-3 fatty acids are there that one the first example is the alpha linolenic acid is the alpha linolenic acid the second example is the timnodonic acid is the timnodonic acid and the third example is of the sarvonic acid is the sarvonic acid now this timnodonic acid it is also known as ecosa pentanoic acid and its popular short form is epa whereas this sarvonic acid it is also known as docosa hexaenoic acid and its popular short form is DHA. On the other side, this omega-6 fatty acids, the examples of omega-6 fatty acids are the gamma linolenic acid, is the gamma linolenic acid. The second example is the linoleic acid, is the linoleic acid. And the third example is the arachidonic acid, is the arachidonic, arachidonic acid. Now, there are the students as a uh, 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 confusion that which fatty acid is in which group whether omega 3 or omega 6 so there is one nice trick that you just remember a t c so a t c lies in the omega 3 fatty acid whereas this g l a this g l a it is the omega 6 fatty acid and if you and if you see that this g l a is horizontally is also there gamma linoleic acid so horizontally as well as vertically this g for gamma linoleic acid L for linole linoleic acid and A for arachidonic acid. So, by this you can easily remember that which fatty acid is in the which omega group, right? So, now this arachidonic acid, it helpful or it can synthesize the prostanoids, okay? It can synthesize the prostanoids. Now, generally people or most of the students believe that prostanoids can get synthesized only from the arachidonic acid. But believe me, this is not true. This prostanoids can be synthesized from arachidonic acid, that is true, but this is not the only compound. This prostanoids can also synthesize from linoleic acid. This linoleic acid can also give rise to prostanoids. And this timnodonic acid or you can say ecosa pentanoic acid, it can also synthesize prostanoids. It can also synthesize a prostanoids. Now, then what is the difference between prostanoids synthesized from arachidonic acid, from linoleic acid and from the timnodonic acid? This arachidonic acid which synthesizes prostanoids, they are of the series 2. They are of the series 2 compound. This prostanoid synthesized from linoleic acid, they are of the series 1 prostanoids. They are of the series 1 prostanoid, whereas this prostanoids which get, get synthesized from timnodonic acid, these are the series 3 prostanoids. Series 3 prostanoids. What is the difference between series 1, the series 1, series 2 and series 3 prostanoid? Basically, all the prostanoids, all the different prostanoids have a same action but their potency is different in different series okay so the series 1 the series 1 and series 2 prostanoids are highly potent prostanoids and specifically this series 2 prostanoid these are the highly potent mediator of inflammation as well as platelet aggregation so highly highly potent mediators of highly potent mediators of inflammation of inflammation and platelet aggregation and platelet aggregation whereas this prostanoids of series 3 they are very less potent so i say less potent less potent mediators of inflammation inflammation and platelet aggregation and platelet aggregation so what will be its effect what will be its effect on various body function okay 
So, in addition to this effect, in addition to this different prostanoid and their potency, this tymnodonic acid, it also, this tymnodonic acid also inhibits this arachidonic acid, right? This tymnodonic acid also inhibits arachidonic acid. How? By inhibiting the release, by inhibiting the release of arachidonic acid from its respective phospholipid, okay? So, tymnodonic acid, particularly of the member of this omega-3 fatty acid, it, it carries out two mechanisms and by that both mechanism, the first mechanism is inhibition of arachidonic acid release. So, what will happen? Highly potent, this prostanoids are not able to get released. And the second effect is that this tymnodonic acid itself gives rise to prostanoids of the series 3, which are the less potent. So, ultimately, we can say that this omega-3 fatty acid, this omega-3 fatty acid, it brings down or it decreases the inflammation, it decreases the inflammation and it also decreases the platelet aggregation, platelet aggregation. So, there are certain health benefits of decreased inflammation as well as decreased platelet aggregation. So, if platelet, uh, platelet aggregation is inhibited, we can say that there is a decreased risk of, there is a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease, cardiovascular diseases, right? And if there is a decreased inflammation, we can say that there is a decreased risk of, there is a decreased risk of any inflammatory disorder, let's say for rheumatoid arthritis, there is a decreased risk of rheumatoid arthritis and of course of the other inflammatory disorder in addition to this there is also a decreased risk of certain cancers decreased risk of certain cancers as recently found that certain cancers are because of the more inflammation because of the high degree of inflammation so if inflammation is decreased the risk of those cancers which are related with the inflammation can be decreased okay the third benefit the third benefit is there is a decreased risk of there is a decreased risk, risk of ADHD. What is ADHD? ADHD is the attention deficit hyperkinetic disorder, right? And there is also a decreased risk of Alzheimer's. There is a decreased risk of, there is a decreased risk of Alzheimer's, okay? What is the exact mechanism of decreased risk of ADHD and uh, decreased risk of Alzheimer's? That is not known, but this is the fact that they can decrease the risk of this disease, okay? And so, this omega-3 fatty acid has so many benefits, right? Whereas omega-6 fatty acid by being a highly potent mediators of inflammation and platelet aggregation, they doesn't have these benefits. But we cannot say that omega-6 fatty acids are bad because this linoleic acid, gamma linolenic acid, arachidonic acid, all are more or less essential fatty acid. They have a, they have important other functions, important structural functions are there. So omega-6 fatty acids are also giving health benefit as well as omega-3 fatty acids are also giving health benefit. But if you want to compare this omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid, of course, omega-3 fatty acids are the better. Okay, why better? As I already told you that they have so many health benefits apart from being an essential fatty acid, they decrease cardiovascular disease, they de decrease the risk of rheumatoid arthritis, certain cancer, ADHD and Alzheimer's. Okay, and one last fact that I want to tell you that I forgot earlier that this linoleic acid can also give rise to arachidonic acid, right? And this alpha linolenic acid can also synthesize tymnodonic acid. Okay, so with this, I complete the discussion about the omega fatty acids. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.